Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about Love Exposure from 2008. And this is a winner of the Patreon movie review vote. If you would like for me to review a movie of your choice, then click on the link below in the description for my Patreon and pledge, and maybe I'll be reviewing your movie next month. And this movie was chosen by William Elman, who's had to wait far too long for this. I'm sorry for that. Anyway, this is a nearly four hour movie. It's three hours and 57 minutes. So I don't want to, you know, fake like I saw a four hour movie. It is um, an interesting, odd kind of epic. Obviously it's four hours or almost, sorry, or three hours. 57 minutes and it's actually maybe one of my more favorite weirder kind of high school films I've seen in a long time I actually wish this had come out when I was in high school I wasn't when it came out and I don't know when it came to America but either way it doesn't matter because I was too old at that point but if I was in high school when this came out I would have loved this movie because of how weird it was how interesting it was i would have loved the melodrama i would have loved how strange it was i would have loved the romance i would have loved the commentary on religion this film tackles a lot this film directed by shion sano is just such an epic ride of a film i almost kind of watched it as a mini series instead of in one sitting just because i don't have the time to do a movie like that the patron uh knew this and suggested it actually but uh to watch it that way but i actually do recommend it people do that with the godfather as well actually watch it in like one hour chunks, which is what i did actually also if this was on tv in one hour chunks when i was uh in high school i would have loved it as well but i was thinking of that actually how much i i felt like me and this film could have matched up in a way because it is a lot about attention and love and finding that love when you are younger and whether you find that through your parents whether you find that through a relationship or you find that through religion and what that love means and that exposure to love i don't also know if that is i don't know japanese so i don't know if the title means the same thing it does here or tense or something like that so someone if that did change i i'm open to the idea that that could be possible or like what the title could be it might roughly translate into the exact same thing and maybe i'm making this just to cover my own ass but whatever love exposure is about a young man named you whose uh, mother died when he was very young and his father becomes a catholic priest who barely gives some attention unless they're in the confessional booth so he has to sin to basically get attention he realizes this and after also his father starts a kind of very strange relationship with this woman who seems just a little bizarre but he falls in love with her but he wants more attention from him after kind of that incident and because uh of his uh, mother's death when he was younger so he decides to basically commit sins he's very open about wanting to do sins so he can get attention from his father when eventually that is too much for his father he kind of turns to a life of crime ends up getting into porn and to what they call in this film peak a panty photography which is just upskirt shots nice rebrand guys and then he is always looking for his maria he will do these upskirt shots but he won't actually be in porn because he's looking for his one true love called maria and he finds her this girl named yoko after attacking all these dudes and whatever while at the same time aya aya is uh following him as well to try to convert them to the zero church which is this cult that's been around the town and all that stuff use obsession Session with Yoko while also being followed by this girl Aya who looks at him as one of the original sin or someone who has original sin. It basically gets complicated. I'm not going to act like and I think most people who make reviews about uh, this film do not act like you can sum it up all three hours and 57 minutes within a review that would be foolish but what I like about the sprawling epic I mean I watch it like a tv show but it does sort of play like a mini series in a lot of ways in terms of you know it almost feels like it has chapters there's certain markers which i don't necessarily agree with in terms of like marking the actual flow of the movie but it doesn't actually have a title card until almost an hour in which is interesting because i was like oh <laughs> This is the beginning of the movie. But ultimately, I think a lot of what, when you look for, especially when you're younger, and I think what humanity looks for is that exposure to some sort of love or some sort of understanding or some sort of meaning. People like to understand and feel like they know what is going to happen, some structure to their lives, something to give them that meaning. And it seems like you constantly is looking for that throughout whether he does it through being Catholic with his father and having that relationship with his father that meant so much with him. When that is disrupted, he has to find more meaning in it. So he has to basically commit sins just to have sort of some sense of meaning to also have that relationship. And I think meaning 
and love and that exposure to love, not to overuse the title, is what this film is ultimately about. But the film, you know, you could make a film just about that and not be as weird and as strange and as funky as this movie really is, which has, you know, violence and blood splurting out. Also that you, I forgot to mention this, <laughs> you lose a bet because he doesn't get the right upskirt shot. So he has to dress as a woman and becomes Mrs. Scorpion, who Yoko actually falls in love with. So Yoko thinks she's a lesbian, even though or she thinks she has basically a crush on a woman. She has a crush on Mrs. Scorpion, who is actually you tending to be uh, Miss Scorpion. This movie is something else. But again, that's like another thing. Like he, you has to show to his friends and has to get kind of that camaraderie, that love, that attention from them and showed like he can deal with this bet even though he is like this amazing Pika Panty guy, I guess, with him like doing these like crazy cool ninja kind of moves, like, <laughs> to, like which that, that part is kind of funny, like him just acting like he's the coolest guy in the world doing like the sleaziest things. I also think it has a lot to do with like the idea of the commodification of sexuality, how that's hard to come of age and like deal with you know your sexuality while at the same time that's being you know exploited all over the place what is the meaning where do you go from that what is the healthy way to do that like understanding the idea of sex positivity or understanding where i guess both the line in that is but also kind of having an open discussion of that which i think this film actually does fairly well you know Al although i will say it doesn't talk about too much that he's sort of you know doing this to girls who he's not you know asking so that that part is not so great um that that is not good at all um i think it's actually probably less good than actually doing porn because those people are usually you know on a set aware of it making money off of themselves and the people he's doing this to are not which this film just like doesn't get into doesn't get into that at all it's like oh you're gross that's like they probably should, but maybe that's also the point because I think oftentimes in this film, it shows the decisions people make to get this attention, to get this love, to get that understanding and not thinking about what they're doing to other people and what the ramifications are of that choice, which which is, you know, interesting. I don't, maybe I'm reading into that, but I like what Sono Sion does in this film and how he kind of twists and weaves um, these various stories through kind of this kind of very odd explanation, like this view of these teenagers who I don't think have a complete handle on it. I often wonder, I do think this film is more from their perspective and having these adult characters who we don't fully you know, understand with his father and this woman who kind of comes in and out of his life and it is also Yoko's adoptive uh, mother, which that whole relationship's bizarre, but that that whole thing, it, it feels very developed, but it feels like a child's understanding of it. It doesn't actually understand, it feel like an adult's understanding of that relationship, or in particular, like her one, she just feels like this sort of crazy person through a lot of it, and it does feel like after he's grown up, and the film almost feels like it's matured, since that you get her as more fully realized, or maybe understanding her actions more. I do, you know, this also talks about cults and the Zero Church, which apparently the director um, had some experience with cults, mainly the Moonies. He said basically how he mainly went around because he was homeless and he was hungry and they would give him food and shelter and stuff and the manipulation that these cults have. But Zero Church in this is almost like probably, I don't know much about the Moonies, or, but I think it's more about on the idea of wiping, you know, it's basically like making you a zero, making you nothing other than in the service of the zero church and stuff. But I think it also shows like what people will do to get that acceptance uh, in their lives or that meanings, meaning in their lives. So I think it fits kind of the ultimate theme of this film, which is pretty apparent, which is the idea of acceptance and love and that exposure to that. And I think the character of you is so, you know, hard on his sleeve altruistic and so forth you have so many of these kind of like teenage kind of coming of age films and you have like especially because film is very male and so forth that you have a protagonist who usually has their heart on their sleeve like once that kind of understanding through it and oftentimes although those films make a statement about maturity and growing up and so forth they don't necessarily talk about the idea of kind of finding acceptance through that it's almost like finding acceptance within yourself and you kind of see this film in this narrative show is more about that journey that he's trying to find love in his own life or finding that attention or finding that meaning throughout it although i do think he sort of 
finds acceptance in the end. I don't, that's sort of up to debate. I sort of wonder if the end is a fantasy or not, but knowing this movie, who, who, who knows really, but it is far more about that than it is like finding like, oh no, he's a man or whatever, which is a, a different way to do it. And I think it thematically, this film is very tight. It understands its themes, it understands what it's about and what the narrative is trying to do, which I, which I found it actually really interesting because I think oftentimes people, when they're making a film in America, they're far more interested in like the interesting, weird ways to take the story. And this film is interesting and weird throughout uh, the entire time, but thematically is very tight. It's very actually easy, you know, for a film that has these characters who are always looking for kind of love and that understanding or something, its understanding is almost very much there the entire time. Whether that in itself is sort of a statement on the fact that it, all of this was there the entire time and maybe their whole journey was a little fruitless and pointless is maybe part of it i don't think so but <laughs> that would be interesting but but i think that shows like what is smart about this director because it is weird and as strange and as perverted as this movie often is it a hundred percent gets what it is it is very much you know when i got to the end of it i was kind of like i think it was very tonally consistent i think it completely you know it looks like you're going into this weird art movie thing but i don't actually think it's like this weird like hard thing to understand this would actually be a really you know like i said i would have loved this as a teenager i think this would be actually really great for people who are getting into movies kind of a watch it's not like not to say it's stupid i don't think that at all actually i think it's a really smart movie um but i think because it is very easy to pick up on, but I think its actual journey of itself is far more complex because we don't talk about those kind of journeys. We don't talk about those people who are looking for kind of that love and that meaning throughout their lives. We talk more about, oh, they grow up and it's sort of over. And I almost felt like this film, you know, since I was watching it for uh, a while, and you know, even in chunks, it, f it almost, I got so used to the rhythm of it i could have ended up watching this film forever i know that there was a six hour cut that the producers asked them to cut down i'm a little curious what those other two hours could have been i did not look them up or if that information is even out there uh, i know people have, have wanted it to be shorter i think it works pretty perfectly um there's so much in here and it's so dense and about the various characters it works really well love exposure when you come to the end of it you understand that these characters are just sort of looking for that attention or looking for love or looking for a way to get that sort of thing and much like how you goes on this crazy journey just to get some sort of attention from his dad some sort of meaning or exposure to what he's doing in terms of you know the porn he's into or the uh <laughs> or the crimes and so forth i think it it ultimately shows a narrative of what i think humanity looks for because we've had you know, people always say humans are social creatures and all those things like that. But I think this goes down to what ma mainly people look for is kind of love and understanding. And I think that's all wrapped up into love. And I think that's really what this film is about. In some ways, it's asking for something that's much more caring and understanding than its kind of subversive nature, which makes it maybe actually, when you think about it, the meaning of this film is far sweeter than you imagine from watching this whole movie um which i think is kind of what draws it together it has a very hard on its sleeve meaning even though it's commenting all those things it has a very kind of easy you know thing that i think is very universal it just chose to do it in a non-universal way but maybe life in itself and finding love isn't the most universal thing it's very odd and specific and a strange thing and then you sort of get there and you're like what are we how, why is she tied up and we're on the beach in a kid van or something i don't understand anyway it i quite liked love exposure it was a crazy journey to be on and i think much like your journey to find love in your own life it is a crazy journey and you're not really sure what the meaning of it all is but then you sort of get to the end of it and somehow it sort of makes sense and maybe that's like the great metaphor of life and maybe the great metaphor of what love exposure really is so if you have seen Love Exposure and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to. And this was a winner of the Patreon movie review vote. If you would like for me to review a movie of your choice, then click on the link below and pledge and maybe I'll be reviewing your movie next month. Thank you very much for watching.